What's up? My name is Mike Yakovlev, and I'm going to show you how I made this really cool cyberpunk cityscape. I made it all in Blender, and I'm just going to show you how I did it and kind of my methodology and maybe some tips and tricks that you can apply into your renders to help you get a similar effect. Let's jump into it. So I'm just going to open up my recycling bin because I threw it away. I'm going to use Blender 3.5 Alpha. It's it's like way faster. I recommend if you're trying out new Blender versions, like Cycles rendering is like twice as fast in my experience, highly recommend. So to be honest, I'm a little bit of a cheat. Like every other artist, I used 3D asset packs and then just kind of like a wide field of view to kind of capture everything and make it look really cinematic and dynamic. Uh, but really that's the, like, the bulk of where the awesomeness is coming from. It's the asset pack from uh, Kitbash 3D. Um, I just bit the bullet, finally bought me a pack, uh, bought a couple actually. The best thing about them is that they're really detailed so you can get stuff up close, you get stuff super far out. And this is what the render uh, looks like in Blender. So if I turn on like some of the regular shading, you can see that, you know, it's a big volume block essentially. And so let's see if I can hide the volume, you can see the setup. And like, I really wanted this like, towering these towering structures so i just brought these buildings in directly from the asset pack unchanged nothing is like made by me so you know i'm a hack and uh, and then i did add this 40k which is just a uh a text so if i go into edit mode like i can i can delete and write 50k something like that so this is just a um a text if you click shift a and then text right here. So you click on text and you get some text right there. Go to edit mode to type whatever you want. And so all I did was in the settings here, I gave it a little bit of extrude, gave it some depth. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. And then I just applied like a very moderately bright emissive texture to it. Uh, nothing too crazy after that. Same thing with the word club. It's the same, done the same way. And uh, I really kind of was inspired by a lot of the stuff I've been seeing from Max Hay. And a lot of people are inspired by him, but they will never admit to it. Unlike me, uh, I'm just giving it to you straight. <laughs> I'm just, I'll just tell you how it is, man. He uses like an insane um, field of view. It's like, this one's 14 millimeters and sometimes it'll be like 12, you know, 12. Sure, why not? 10, 10 works. I mean, it's just gets more and more uh, intense and, and makes things elongate and kind of in a, in a good way, compositionally fits more into the screen and makes the environment feel very big. So if you do a very wide or very, I guess, small focal length, it'll make everything seem really, really huge and really, really tall. And then if you go, if you go higher, if you go like 88, it really like shrinks things down. And now this, um, this actually looks cool. It kind of looks like that one like infamous Akira scene where like the buildings are panning up, you know, and I bet that they used a they, or for reference, they probably used a very high focal length to get to achieve that effect. So if you want to achieve that effect, try it. I might try it. Uh, but yeah, I really just wanted to keep the amount of lights down and I wanted to let the atmosphere speak for itself. And this is kind of where I think using 3.5 uh, of, uh, of Blender might help you because Cycles is a little bit faster. So if you do put in something like a volume cube, and uh, here's my cube, I'm just gonna enable it. And all it is is a volume scatter node plugged into the volume. You don't want to really use principal volume. I learned this from Ian Hubert as well. Like he uses volume scatter node into the volume. Basically turning up the anisotropy, getting it closer to one, will make the, uh, let's see if we can do it here. As the noise kind of clears up, you can see that at 0 0.27, it's like that. At 0 0.6, it has a little bit more glow and a little bit more fog is like localized around it. So, you know, it's up to you, play with that. And this is really the, where like the hazy effect kind of comes from. And it's also a really good effect for bloom. So if you're used to Eevee and you get a really cool bloom from there, I think this also is, you know, it's a computationally intensive bloom, but if you have the power for it and if it works out for you, it's worth it. And like the buildings are really doing a lot of the heavy lifting. The ground is also just like a texture from Polyhaven. And I'll have links to all the stuff that I'm using, especially even where I got the characters. Like some of the characters I've gotten from Ian Hubert's Patreon page, which I guess I can link to that if you want. One cool thing though, I have not really seen too many people mess around with, which is, this is my version, I guess, of let's say photo bashing. You go outside, you take a picture in the city, in New York or whatever. And what I would do in Photoshop is I would just bring those in and just have them kind of fill the background of my cityscapes and kind of create these like this bustling 
light uh, density so that it looks like there's like some stuff going on there some action going on there but blender crashed oh no there we go so uh <laughs> we can see here if i select them you can kind of see the uh, the planes that are brought in and i made a separate in a separate video i'll link to that as well but uh in that video i talk about how i do images as planes the add-on and i use that to bring in these uh these planes of like Tokyo night cities and things like that. And uh, just brought them in as emission planes. You can see here they're plugged into the alpha and then into the emission, just so that I get the lights from the photos. I really don't need anything else. And I'm kind of just bashing them together and giving them, uh, making it look like there's you know life and there's some stuff going on back there, but really uh, there's nothing back there. It's kind of like a video game. If you like walk where you're not supposed to go, you just, you know, it's nothingness. Um, but yeah, and I just kind of strategically placed those behind the gate and then around the corner just to give it the, uh, the the feeling that there's more going on there than there actually is. So try it out for yourself and let me know if it works out. But other than that, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or if you want to know more, if you want to see more or whatever, leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.